Howdy again everyone. A few years ago now, I tested out the IMEX 15mm f2.4, a very nice ultra-wide angle lens for digital SLR cameras. Well, IMEX have now tweaked that model by adding a built-in adapter for Sony E-mount cameras and a useful aperture control ring. Neat. The resulting lens is pretty big, as you can see, but still really useful. On a full-frame camera, 15mm is of course a gapingly wide angle, useful for all kinds of architecture and landscape photography, and the bright maximum aperture of f2.4 means you can easily shoot in darker conditions and even get some out of focus backgrounds, well, if you shoot close enough to your subject, that is. It's still a manual focus lens, but the aperture can be controlled electronically by your camera if you wish, and the lens does record EXIF information in your files also. I'd like to thank IMIX for sending me one of these new Sony E-mount lenses for evaluation, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. When it comes to build quality, this thing feels real nice to handle, but as a digital SLR lens with a built-in adapter, it is correspondingly big, as you can see. The lens is weather sealed with the gasket at the rear, although you can see electronics if you peer into the rear, which always makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. A key improvement over the original lens for digital SLRs is its aperture control ring at the bottom. It can be set to work with gentle clicks, or if you flip a switch, it turns completely smoothly for video work. Useful. Then comes the beautifully designed rubberized focus ring. It turns very smoothly and precisely, perfect for shooting even at f2.4. As you can see here, when adjusting focus, the lens exhibits very little focus breathing. In front of that manual focus ring comes a locking ring to set the focus ring into a certain position if you want to. I found that it didn't work very well. It was quite stiff, and as you turned the locking ring, often the focus ring would turn with it, spoiling your focus. Some good news is that you can attach filters to the front of this lens that's not to be taken for granted on a full frame 15mm optic, and is very useful in my opinion as a fan of polarising and ND filters for landscape photography. Less encouraging is that the filter size is 95mm wide, which means your filters will be very expensive. IMEX themselves actually make some fantastic slim filters of this size, which will work very well with the lens in question. The lens also comes with a plastic hood, with a gap on the side for adjusting your filters, again a thoughtful touch. Overall, it's great build quality here, although I wish they'd redesigned the optics of the lens for mirrorless cameras instead of repackaging the original digital SLR design. It could have been so much smaller if they did. Anyway, let's take a look at image quality now. I'll be testing it on my Sony a7R 3 camera with its 42 megapixel sensor. Despite this being a lens with some electronics inside, in-camera corrections were not available, and you will see the effects of that fairly clearly. In the middle of the image, straight from f2.4, we are seeing fantastic resolution and high contrast. Over in the corners, things are a bit less promising, lots of darkness, but there's enough resolution here to at least make out what's going on, and contrast isn't any worse. It's top down to f4 though, and everything gets way better in the corners, as you can see, and f5.6 gets really quite sharp, with low colour fringing. The lens stays this sharp down to f16, although at f22, softness creeps in, due to the effects of diffraction. Okay, well, in terms of sharpness, this is quite a good performance, although I do wish the corners were a bit better at the brightest apertures. And, as I mentioned, this lens does not work with in-camera corrections, unfortunately, so let's take a look at vignetting and distortion. Some noticeable barrel distortion is being projected here, but nothing dreadfully serious. Unsurprisingly, at f2.4, those corners are looking really pretty dark. As you stop down to f4, f5.6 and f8, they eventually brighten up, so you'll definitely want to at least correct that peripheral illumination. This lens can focus down to about 24cm, just enough for capturing slightly smaller subjects. At f2.4, the good news is that close-up image quality is just as good as at normal distances. Alright, let's see how the lens performs against bright lights now. It's not a great performance here at f2.4, some clear flecks of flaring can be seen, as well as a hazy flash around the edges. Stop down to f4 though, and we see a good improvement in contrast. 
When it comes to coma levels, some smearing on bright points of light is visible in the corners at f2.4. Stop down to f4 though and it's virtually gone. If you stop down to f11 or f16, then sun stars begin to emerge, but only rather small ones. Finally, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. Everything's fine here, out of focus backgrounds are nice and soft. In conclusion, this is a nice little upgrade to Irex's classic 15mm lens from a few years ago, but its optical design is getting a little out of date now. It's nice and sharp, taking lovely pictures with good colours and contrast, and the new aperture ring is handy, and it has good build quality, but it's bigger and heavier than its manual focus competitors, its work against bright lights could have been a little better, and newer lenses are a bit sharper than this. Oh, and the lack of in-camera credit is an issue for JPEG shooters, so the IMAX 15mm f2.4 is still a nice option, especially if you want a slightly brighter aperture, but the competition is snapping at its heels nowadays. Well, thanks for watching everyone, and a special thanks to my supporters over on Patreon, who make such a huge difference to me carrying on and keeping these free lens reviews going. Check it out in the description below. Patreon supporters get all kinds of extra bonus content which I love making for them. Ciao for now, everybody.